Record. Record to this computer. Okay, Dad. Look, everything all good. is set up. Everything Live is good Live on Facebook now. and recording. Okay, yeah. give me a second. <laughs> Do you have your thing pulled up to say the words when I get there? I have the words memorized at this point, Dad. Oh, way to go. All right. <laughs> I quit laughing. I got to have a break so I can say welcome. Welcome, Internet, to episode 22 Two. <laughs> of Sits and Big Pops Culture. Uh, I am Big Pops, a.k.a. Todd Turner, also known as Mosaic Fan Art. And as always, the person who remembers what episode number we're on. <laughs> I'm Sis, a.k.a. Hannah Joe, and together we are father and adult daughter duo. We dive into all things geek, nerd, and fandom. Every episode is family friendly. Well... Friends, today. I want to know what the family friendly, we got to have family friendly sound like. Is, is a, instead of E for everyone, I don't know. Family friendly. <laughs> I don't know. Go ahead, Hannah. Is there today. a family friendly sound? Yeah. So today, friends, we have quite a few things that we're getting into. As per the huge, um, we're starting off with some nerd news. Um, nerd we are, news. Indeed. We are going to talk about Pop's pull list. And we um, read a phenomenal graphic novel and i cried while i, I read it too it was so good but i'm a um, crier so it we cry matter. dad me I and know. you we just I'm cry man. Start it right now, start right now. <laughs> stop and your girl finally watched justice league and so we're gonna talk about it yes a movie so long we have to talk about it twice indeed start with news nerd news I wish I could make a typewriter sound, but I'm bad at it. So <laughs> <laughs> we talked last week about Black Widow being who knows when. And they, they pushed it back already. They finally said it is coming out June 9th in the theater. Which is when they, they which is no, no, no. pushed back. July, not? July 9th. My bad. July 9th. Which is pushed back from the original. Correct. It's but it's also going to be available on that Disney. Premier Access. Premier Access. Something that I noticed that I think is very interesting is that all of the Disney animation, big Disney like stuff that is released is released premiere access. So you have to pay for it. Right. I've only but, known of two other things. But the Disney Pixar things that are released on Disney Plus, anybody can watch them. Yeah, but I think that was a deal because it was Christmas. No, because they're releasing Luca and it's not going to be premiere access. Really? Luca is coming out this summer and it's for any anyone can watch it. You don't have to pay for it to watch it. So wait, Raya and the Last Dragon's not Pixar? It's Disney? It's, it's Disney animation. Which is, they're all the same. I mean... I it, mean, they're not. We are the world. We own everything. Yeah, um, Disney, cool. Pixar. Pixar is uniquely different from Disney. I've read books mm -hmm. about it. I care you know a lot catch about a, this subject. You know how to catch a unique rabbit? Unique up on it. Do you know how to catch a tame one? Tame way. Gosh, on it. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> speaking of Disney Plus, before. they are raising the price a dollar a month. Oh, no. Okay, what does so, that mean if you've already paid for a year? Um, I guess when you're... Subscription goes up, Subscription it's 12 more extra up, dollars. It goes up 12 more buckaroonskis. Lame. Yes. Yeah, because that's how we Lame. pay for it. A year, and a year at a time. I think we're good till like almost Thanksgiving, right? I think so. Because that's when it started, like October or November of whatever year it started. I'm pretty sure. Because it was right around Thanksgiving time when we got it. Yeah, because we watched the Imagineers together mm -hmm. for Miriam's yes. graduation. And that was in December. Imagineers? I don't remember that. We watched, we sat and watched the Imagineering story. We watched an episode of it together on the couch in Miriam's house. Oh, okay. Do you not remember that? No, I remember us watching um, oh, that Old makes Guard. Me sad. We watched Old Guard. That was in the summertime. Okay. Well, I don't, I, you know, I'm 50 something. The days all run together. I don't even, what is today, by the way? I don't even know. Is it, what is it? <laughs> it's the 28th. All right. Do you have any news, Hannah? Um, Dad. What? One of my favorite things in the entire world. Oh, Hannah, you have a bazillion favorite things. I have things a bazillion world. favorite things in the entire world. But Suicide Squad, the red, the big grown-up red band trailer came okay, out. Okay, yeah. So don't let your kids watch this one. 
I saw no. it. It was hysterical. I hate to admit it. It is pretty raunchy. It's and... so funny. Yeah. Here's the um, thing. I love Suicide Squad. I love Suicide Squad. I went and watched it in theaters and then ranched and raved about. Completely different movie. Then I, I know, Dad. I know. Okay. I'm just saying that I'm stoked about it. I got you. I watched Harley. I watched the fantabulous emancipation of whatever Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn, Birds of Prey. I thought it was a terrible movie. Um, Phenomenal. Gosh, we phenomenal had film. Totally different. Um, well, oh, it was. This is not it was good. very much like we could we could get into like feminist theory and the difference between the female gaze and the male gaze and watching that type of film and the differences between that, that and we just won't do it. But it's very interesting yes, and they're very. Because I think movies. if everyone was neuter, I still wouldn't like the movie. Is that what? possible? If everybody was neuter, non no gender assigned, I don't think I would still like the. Birds I've never heard movie. that word before ever, Dad. Yeah, neuter's not right. It's not. <laughs> neuter means they don't have parts. Oh, yeah. Daddy. It's supposed to be friend, friend, kid friendly, so we will stop oh, talking no. about that. Yeah, neuter's not correct. Mm -mm. <laughs> that was the wrong That was the wrong term. That was the wrong but word. anyway, back to, since we're on James Gunn's Suicide Squad. I'm stoked about it. It's going to be for, it's grown-ups. Grown-ups. Right now, grown. the thing says, movie has not yet been rated. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, you gotta be kidding you, you me. Gonna, you're it's... gonna try to get that PG-13? There ain't no way. No way. There ain't no really way. Hard. Okay, so I had to call and tell you this because I knew you wouldn't have any clue who the, who it is. But at yes, the end of the you movie, did. Um, the one guy says, we got a kaiju up in here. <laughs> is, remember that guy saying that? <laughs> no. I was it like, is a not kaiju. a kaiju. It is Starro the Conqueror. It's gotta be Starro <laughs> the Conqueror. And if you go look at the trailer comments, everything is like Starro. Quite, half of them are like, bring back the Snyderverse. And half of them are like, it's Starro. That's dope. It's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. So Starro is a giant starfish from outer space that first appeared in like Brave and the Bold, which was the reason the Justice League was created. The Justice League formed to fight Starro, which like... Um, it's so would trippy, man. Would manip would um, mess with your mind and make you do what it wanted to what do. What is it? Is it? It's you a wanna, T word. Is it tele telepathy? telepathic or telepathy or whatever? Do you want to know how they defeated Starro in the first comic book? How they like threw lime on him because it shriveled him up. <laughs> like you would do, like like, like if you lime would pull juice. Starfish, like no, like lime, like uh, the powder lime. Like if you would pull oh, a man. snail like or a starfish stone. out of the water and you would stuff on them to shrivel them up man yeah, that's how they did it. that's hysterical that's it. so i'm just waiting for like a giant shaker of salt to be sprayed on him by peacemaker john cena or whatever who john by the way cena! who by the way is hilarious he's so i don't even know why i like him he not... dad he his um career right now is like early dwayne the rock johnson career well, like in that's film. not what he's cooking. I can believe <laughs> but it. But no, like if you go back he and look at- just had a movie came out that your mom and I really wanted to watch where they were like, babe, they were firefighters babysitting some kids. Yep. Completely missed it. I still wanted to watch it because yep. it had, um, I can't remember who else it had in it, but- He and Dave Batista are on, are like, are doing like early, like we, we watched uh, Game Plan. So like when uh, The Rock was doing like stuff like yes. that. You think like, that's where they are right now? That's where they're at. Except John Cena's like inching forward a bit, man, because he's got yeah. this. Although Dave Bautista just had a movie I come mean, out so on Amazon that, that about being a spy, dope. and I haven't watched it either. Oh, is that the spy movie with the little girl? Yes. <laughs> yes, it looks so funny. Anyway. I love him. It's just so Starro, there's something about that trope of like giant guy with the little girl. That's it worked just for Din, it worked for Din Diesel. I just said Din Diesel. It worked for Vin Diesel in the pacifier. So <laughs> it's I just... guess they all have to try it, right? <laughs> Din Diesel. What the heck is that? We're on something today, Dad. So do you you know who Pierce Bronson is? Yes. He is Dr. Fate in the Black Adam movie, the that the Rock. Which the, is the Rock the Shazam. Yeah. yeah, the Shazam, Shazam. type spinoff. Mm -hmm. so when is that be, coming out? Who knows? I don't even know if they've even so started filming. 
they've been talking about this black adam movie for probably 10 years i am really uh i can't believe that it's actually going to happen but you don't you you were like surprised by that didn't yes, you didn't you tell surprised. me about that shazam came out 2019 i think i don't remember 2019 it did mm -hmm. but they were talking about a black adam movie before they even ever talked about a shazam movie mm. so well, they should need to do another shazam movie because that movie was really good. they are shazam too which by the way they have cast a villain who helen mirren oh who is she gonna be she's a villain um i don't know who it is but she's the bad one and she's a fantastic actress so, helen mirren is fun she's in the red movies yep mm -hmm. we she, like uh, those too she's also the mom on um the uh Nicolas yes. cage movies where they steal everything yes the and she's National treasure she's mm -hmm. also isn't she also in the um last couple fast and furious movies was she really isn't she shaw's oh <gasps> yes no yes she's their mother mm -hmm. yes <gasps> forgot that <laughs> helen mirren what about oh, her what a gem she's gonna be so good in that you got any more news? No. Did you hear? I told you who is a definite for Disenchanted. Oh, you did James tell me Marsden that. James Marsden and um, Adele Dazeem. Adele Dazeem. They got Adina Menzel. No, it's Adele. Wait, are they the same person? They're two different uh, yeah. people. They're, no, they're the same. Same. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Yes, so they are definite. Um, That's awesome. Is Amy Adams the, and Patrick oh, yeah, they're Dempsey, already. have they already signed? Absolutely. So we were just waiting on them. Oh, Even the yes. little girl. She's not a little girl yes. anymore. Um, so by the time this is loaded to the podcast, mm. Godzilla vs. King Kong will already be out. It comes out this weekend? Comes out the 31st. Comes out Wednesday. <sighs> okay. So the Chinese trailer gave it away. Oh, Remember what wins? I told you about? Remember I told you? No. What did I tell you happened? I said... It's Godzilla vs. King Kong. And they're going to fight each other, and then something else is going to come, and then they're going to join together, and then they're going to fight against a big guy. Yes. Mecha Who's Godzilla. The... Mega so, Godzilla? Mecha. Lazen Mecha. Robot. I am a robot. So <laughs> Why? remember. Okay. Who built a robot Godzilla? The dude. Who's the dumb bad enough dude, to do that? The bad dude from the last one. Remember the bad dude who shot up everybody and killed everybody, and then had um what's her face from stranger things his mom there with him and he was in charge he was a dad do you know that i remembered none of that film because it was okay. just not as good as the godzilla okay. or as gotcha. king kong so anyway you remember the villain the the main monster had three heads right yeah Ghidorah, gidra however you want to pronounce yeah. it yeah the monster from planet x when i was growing up so <laughs> at the very end of the credits which the credits are about the only thing worth watching in that movie. <laughs> Sorry. But at the very well, end. Well, Mothra, the, the, the part with Mothra was cool, except it was so dark and so light and the scope of it was so big. It was like hard for me to pay attention to. Yeah, I still have stuff. spots in my retina from that movie. I still can't see right after watching it. So at the end, <laughs> at the end of the credits, they show someone has got one of Ghidorah, Ghidra, Planet X's heads oh no so i'm thinking they have put this head made it a robot it's a giant mecha godzilla with the head of a rodan not rodan <sighs> not rodan Ghidorah, Ghidra, whatever and that's what they have to fight at the end to save the world that's so dumb i know so i'm mad pieces. about that actually oops why what else are they I gonna don't... do i know <sighs> i mean these movies have come to an end they ain't gonna do much more they could fight you know? starro in the next one because they are owned by Warner Brothers, right? Let's yeah. bring it all together. We got a kaiju up in here. Okay, so listen. I don't know, it's lame. The Loki TV show. Looks so funny. Well, apparently there's going to be old Loki, lady Loki, kid Loki. So all of this flipping back and forth from different time streams. Because um, uh, a young uh, actor posted a something and uh -oh. apparently he's going to be kid loki should he not have know. done that did he get in trouble no is it know. tom he'll, holland he'll get the tom holland talk no it's not tom holland I don't or the, the mark ruffalo talk where he like actually like instagram lived like the first 30 minutes of the 
<laughs> Thor yeah. movie. Whatever. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so Owen Wilson, not to be confused with Luke Wilson, <laughs> after my Wilson brother debacle last week, is is in charge of this time variance authority, and they're he's going to be working with Loki to go back mm-hmm. through these timelines. So, did you watch was- the commercial where it's like them like? show like showing like the poster and owen wilson is like yeah and we're like the same amount of important for this and then tom hiddleston's like no the show's literally called loki what's your character's name oh wait not loki (laughs) (laughs) no i didn't see it i'll have to watch that that sounds it was really funny Okay, so I have one last thing, and this is a shout out to all the 80 babies out there like myself. Not so me. growing up, of course, we loved arcade video games. We're talking the stand-up boxes. We would play them at the bowl. Stranger room. Things. For those of you who are confused, Stranger yeah, Things. Yeah, they used to have places where you would go and play video games because you couldn't play them in your home. And you would cost a quarter. If it cost 50 cents, you'd be like, why the heck does that cost 50 cents? This is lame. Lame. Or exactly. Wreck-It Ralph, perhaps. Wreck it maybe Ralph, maybe my deal. friends up in here are like oh, Stranger yeah. Things. I'm not allowed to watch that. Those are that's for big kids. Huh. So there was Wreck It Ralph. Wreck It Ralph. So there was a movie when I was a kid about this young guy who would play this video game at his, where he lived, like this, like a trailer park. But at the office, they had like a one stand up game, and he would play this game over and over again, and he was fantastic at it. And he ends um, up defeating the game. What is it, is it? One of your things you have behind you? No. Uh-uh. Okay, it's I'm not. sorry. So I don't have anything. I used to have the comic book, but I sold it. Oh, I'm sorry, Daddy. Anyway, it's called The Last Starfighter. It came out in 1984. And what happened was the video game console wasn't really a video game. It was a training simulation. Uh. And whoever could master the game was who they wanted to come and help them defeat the, the evil empire. So, so like they Ender's this game. kid up. Yeah, I never nowhere. read or watched it. Well, the movie was sad, depressing. I have this a wasn't movie. sad never seen and depressing. It. Okay, so fun. Um, I'm sorry, I interrupted so you. If you've never seen the movie, how do you know about the Easter egg that's on it to save the world? Because you've got to put all these Easter eggs together and line them up like Doctor Who so that we will know how to save the world, Hannah. For you've Ender's to... Game? No. For all your movies. Remember you have your 16 movies? Oh, like, yeah, I should. Blink. Yeah, there's probably something secret in it. There's there anyway. Is, so I need to watch it. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> they are trying to make a sequel to this movie. And the guy, his name is Gary Whitta, who was the screenwriter for Rogue One. Oh, that was a dope movie. I loved it. Great movie. He put together what they call a sizzle reel and put it on YouTube. Those are fun. So it, so it shows concept art. Mm-hmm. Um and uh, storyboards of what he wants to do with the movie and i went and watched it It looks really good and i would love to go see it because i love the movie the last starfighter it was fantastic and when did it come out in the 80s 84 1984 when did when did tron come out it was the 80s as well yeah it was before this it may have been before the 80s i don't Hmm. know exactly you're asking the wrong guy sorry that's okay but that's all Hmm. i got for nerd news, last starfighter. Last starfighter. Yep. I hope that's. I mean, it sounds fun. I hope that they do it. We should get the movie and watch it, and you'll just have to. T- but it's you have to realize it was made in the eighties, so it has a lot of computer generated graphics that look like they're computer generated graphics. Well, go back and watch like Spy Kids, man. Do that's hokey. To? At this, yeah the the first the. Do you remember? I hate to admit it. I liked them all. Yeah, I know you did. We I went and watched even the, no, the, fourth the one, one that was in the fourth D where you had to scratch and sniff things. That, that was, was weird. weird. Yeah. That was weird. We watched the we that. watched the one with Jessica Alba at the movie tavern. That was the scratch and sniff one. That was weird. It was weird. Except but I liked Judy the one with Sylvester Carmen Stallone as the bad yes, guy. That was really three. Bad guy. He becomes a good guy. Yeah. Uh, Spy Kids 3D. Multiple. Game over. Yeah, that was good. Uh, he talked like this the whole time, like Rambo. <laughs> well, no, that sounded more like a cross between Rambo, between Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone. I'm going to have to work on my imitations. Okay, work on that, Doug. Gotcha. All right, well. What you binging? Binging. Okay, um, you first. Okay. I had a midterm due this week, so nothing except 
I watched Justice League. Okay. Well, that gets. But, you know, that's a four hours. <laughs> that's six parts. So we'll get so, to that when we get there. I didn't binge anything. I I I, I watched uh, Worm Life, which is a uh, you. Dad's making a face. It's like like Worm w, Life. Like, like you watch w- like worms. Y W Y R M. There's a company so in Massachusetts. Dragons. There's a company in Massachusetts they called Wormwood. They, they make. make dra- oh yeah yeah yeah. They make. I've told custom, you about this. They make know, customs. They make like bougie custom wood products for. Um, tabletop like gaming a, and like stuff a like that. Table. And they release like 15 minute episodes about what's happening in their business twice a week. And you I had gotten we behind them on, on those. Every episode, they would send us one. What? If, if we mention them at every episode. I mean, I watch them every week, maybe but I doubt it. Maybe they're one of our seven listeners, followers, <laughs> followers, not <laughs> listeners. <laughs> What's up, yeah, Wormwood? Yeah, Doug from Wormwood is just sitting listening to our nerd podcast. Doubt it. That's hilarious. Uh, but I should yeah. hashtag it. Doug. So I, I watched. I was behind on their stuff because I hadn't watched any of them because. And of if nobody has seen that term. stuff, that is cool. Their stuff is fun. Their 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 YouTube show is for grownups. Oh, because of language. Because of language. Gotcha. And their stuff's really cool. Like, you could get on their website. It's Wormwood, I think, Wormwood Gaming, perhaps. Gotcha. And it's Worm spelled with a Y-R. Y-W- yeah, W-Y-R-M. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. So um, I watched, I, I I guess I binged that. There was, like, five episodes I hadn't seen. So I watched well, is, all of those. Yeah. So I binged Absolutely. that okay. on YouTube. Well, what I am, you? I got to the point on Stargirl while I got, where I got uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm terrible. I'm terrible. That I get happens to, the, to you, Dad. I get to the part where I'm like, oh, I don't I don't want to see what happens next. And I just quit watching it. Well, you're allowed to do that. As a consumer, you're allowed to choose to enjoy and something or choose to stop what enjoying I did. it. That's what I did. So I stopped. Um, Very it well. just I was like, uh, I don't want anything bad to happen and something bad going to happen. So I quit. So <laughs> instead, <laughs> I started watching um, an animated uh, Justice League series on HBO Max because... Some of the peoples in my, peoples in my small group said they loved Justice League Unlimited, so shout out to Trey and Ray. So I got started watching Justice League Unlimited, and um, it's all right. Yeah, the cool. cool thing about it is is that it do, it just doesn't um, focus on the big seven um, of the Justice League. Okay, can I guess the big seven? Sure. Um. All of the the uh, Wonder Woman, yep. Batman, Superman, yep. Flash, yep. Green Lantern, yep. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Is it? Is it Aquaman? Is Aquaman one of them? Yep. And one Cyborg is not one of them. Correct. I don't know this one. He's not Hawk from our Girl. Uh, Martian Manhunter. So it it you get to see a bunch of the heroes throughout the DC universe being spotlighted. Cool. Like Hawk and Dove, which I loved the little mini series they had in the 80s. It was drawn by Rob Layfeld, who's most known for his Deadpool. He created Deadpool. Oh, dope. Um, and um, his art style was like all over the place. He draws feet this small. But anyway, um, he's got a specific art style. You either love him or hate him, but he loves his creations. So you have to give him props mm-hmm. for that. Um, they Zantana the magician the female magician who says everything backwards she was just in a episode that's fun when did um, when was it released was it the 90s uh i think the 2000s i'm not 100 oh, tell sure. me what it was i'll google it justice league unlimited so i just started watching that um so i'm in the first season i've watched like the first six or seven episodes they're only like 30 40 minutes they are upper teen they, <laughs> they some of the stuff they say is a little bit like uh there's a there's a character called Bawana Beast that help that can talk to animals that Batman enlists to help him find a Wonder Woman who's been turned into a pig, and he meets Zatanna Zatanna, and uh, and she's like, uh, my legs and something are fine, my eyes are up here, so you know what that means. Uh-oh. So they draw all their women extremely busty, and hippie, and um, so I don't know. 
It was on Cartoon Network. It was yeah, first but... released in 2004, final 2006. Gotcha. There you go. So, so like three so seasons, maybe? 17 years ago, uh, it was okay to draw women like that, I guess. It's not now. And all of, all of the men look like Doritos. Yes, they have the big shoulders. I looked at that. I was like, oh, and another thing about it is Green Arrow, who our friend Ed loves. Shout out to Ed. Um, they, he's like got, the, he loves this woman named Diana Lance. We've talked about this before. And, uh, but he's up on the JLA sat satellite and he just keeps looking at her. Like, he's like, I'm like, Oh, that's inappropriate. <laughs> but, but in 2004, it was so cool. But I, anyway, I watched that. I also, wa I tried to watch a new show that came out on Amazon called Invincible which is a comic book written by Robert Kirkman, the same guy who did The Walking Dead. He's also writing the comic book Firepower that I love right now. Hmm. So he wrote this comic book called Invincible about this teenager who gets his powers. His dad was like a, uh, an alien, um, cool. sort of like Superman, and married uh, an Earth woman, and they have a child, and he gets superpowers. And um, it's got a, an all-star cast. Mahershal Ali is in it. Oh, Mark dope. Hamill is in it. J.K. Simmons, the guy that plays... Is this uh, a cartoon or people? Yes, it's a cartoon. Cartoon. Okay. J.K. Simmons, you know him as J. Jonah Jameson from this. And he also was in Whiplash. And he's the farmer's... Dun, 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 dun. Yes. He's yes. also in Justice League. Yeah, exactly. So he's in this. And um, I was watching this. It's, it's 18 plus is what mm -hmm. it says. And I was like, oh, this is so nice. I'm really going to like this. And then I got to the end scene and there was uh, uh -oh. blood galore uh -oh. animated. And I was like completely blood. thrown off. So all the people in my comic uh, discord are like, they love this comic book. And, uh, um, and I, t I just sent their message saying, you know, I watched it and it was awesome. And then the last part sort of threw me. I, I just can't really watch that kind of stuff animated. I don't know why it's okay for me to see shoot them up when I know, you know, but for some reason mm -hmm. that just, yeah, it's weird. Maybe it's like a juxtaposition there, for you. Well, one of the guys said that actually that doesn't happen until like the fourth trade paperback. So they really rushed the series to get it. You know, he's like, really, there's the story. A lot more happens in the comic to lead up to that event that happens. Mm, so um, that stinks. Anyway, I, I don't know if I, I, I'll get the first trade and read it and see, and maybe you mm. and I can look at it. Sure. I'm and, down. And, um, but as far as the, the TV show, I, I wouldn't let kids watch it at all. Mm. Okay. Not at all. Yeah. Although there are some great moments between the son and the father and his mom. Sweet. Very sweet. Um, language. Um, yeah. So there you go. That's what I'm binging. You said language made me think language of, made me think of uh, and blood. Well, it made me think of uh, Age of Ultron. Oh, yeah. Captain America. Yeah. Yeah. I'm never going to live that down, am I? We no. can't say those words on here, though. No. Because we are right. family friendly, although Indeed. we have said blood a lot today. Sorry, guys. Uh, uh, can you not say that? No, you can say anyway. that. Anyway. Okay. We make our own rules, Dad. Well, speaking of rules. Yes. Let's go rated. Let's rate this from one being... I know what a basketball is <laughs> and 10 being um, Michael Jordan was a better actor in space jam than Dr. J was in the fish that saved Pittsburgh. Where do you fall on that line? I fall about a three. Okay, good. Okay. Right. Well, you don't know the rules of basketball. They are spelled out for you in the book we're going to talk about. Yeah. Okay. So here's, yeah, dad, I like where, I like where you're going there, dad. Um, Thank you. I care 0% about sports. I know. Your mom actually is downstairs watching, watching March the, Madness right now. As we record. I know. I know that that is a fact. Um, mm -hmm. I played basketball. <laughs> kind of. Upward basketball. I played upward basketball where we wore sweatbands that had a color on them and you were only ever allowed to guard the person who had the same sweatband as you. And they paired, they matched you with someone 
who was similar size and goodness. Skill. <laughs> Skill. <laughs> Skill level. The game. <laughs> Listen, we were listening to a basketball game, a high school basketball game this week, and the guy calling the game said, Girls, this isn't upward basketball. You don't <laughs> you could he said you can guard somebody that does he literally said, you can guard somebody that doesn't have the same color wristband as you. That's hysterical. <laughs> yeah, so I I am, and y'all, I'm I'm not, I'm not a sports girl. I'm just, I'm not a sports right. girl. I'm a, let's read a, like, I was the girl who took a book. To the to basketball game. The basketball games. We have a great photo of our family at a girls basketball game. With this, we last... were, I was paying attention at that game. Thank but you. But you had a book in your hand. Yeah. There is a photo of our entire family watching this last second three point shot that the girls ended up winning that Woo, shot. It was awesome. And Nathan's playing a video game. Hannah has a book in her lap, but she is looking. I'm paying attention. Your mom is like going, ah, you know. <laughs> mom is like standing up, like I don't screaming. Even think Miriam was looking. I don't even know what she's even looking. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> go ahead. So, yeah. So dad is like, Hannah, I have this book that I'd like for you to read. It's, it's a called, graphic novel. It's a graphic novel. It's called Dragon Hoops. And I'm like, ugh. Y'all, and it's not, it's not thin. This is a thick graphic novel. It's probably this an inch is, and a half thick, easy. He's he's got some heft to him. Yep. I'm gonna look how many pages. He's the over four hundred cool, pages. Though. He's over four hundred pages long. <laughs> and I'm fast. like, my dad's about to make me read this four hundred page long book about sports. And I was like, and but dad's like, Hannah, you know what? You're just gonna love it. And yes. y'all, I did. It it is writ it's called Dragon Hoops and it's written by Jean Lun Yang. And if I mispronounce his name, I'm very sorry. He is a New York Times bestseller. Um, he's uh has written a couple other uh graphic novels. One was called American Born Chinese and um Superman versus the Clan. Um he is currently gonna be writing the Batman Superman Infinite Frontiers book, if I can ever get my DC comic books, but we'll talk about that later. Um so this book follows how would you explain it Hannah? so this book so he was a teacher at a high school at a catholic high school and a math teacher yeah he's a math teacher and he had just finished um one of his graphic his one of his first graphic novels and was talking about how he felt like there was a spot in his life that was empty and that he really wanted to learn more and to keep he wanted to do another graphic novel, but he didn't know like what story he to do. Find a, he couldn't, he couldn't find, a find inspiration or a story. And so he had heard people in the school talking about. His wife was the one who told him. His wife said, there's stories all around you. Yeah, there's stories all around you. And he had been hearing people talk about the basketball coach. Yes. And about how, oh, his story is so great or something like mm -hmm. that. And so he went and talked to the basketball coach and then followed the high school basketball team. Um, throughout their season and this is a true story it's and about the bishop o'dowd high school basketball team from oakland california yeah and yeah when i say high school basketball y'all probably think oh that's really cute high school basketball nah these these boys are are they get like is it what's like, i don't i don't know the right term scholarships like is it drafted right they don't that's get drafted right. in high school no I don't this know is a the private words. catholic high school and they have to pay to go there, but they go there because they're known for the basketball team. They're like phenomenal in basketball. They like people go there and then they 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 play professional basketball. Exactly. Eventually. Yes. yes. So yeah. So this is the year that they feel felt like they would win the state championship. Twenty fifteen. Being being from Kentucky, where we love our basketball. That's a big we, deal. We can understand that. Winning the state championship. No, yeah. The boys went to the state championship when I was a Not the championship. senior. They went no. to the Sweet 16. Did they, they go? Went, they didn't go. They didn't the go to the championship, championship but they went to the, they, we, we played in Rupp. Yeah, exactly. What's Rupp that Arena. called? See, y'all, I don't Sweet even know 16, the right words. The Sweet 16. They played two games. So they, that's right. Oh, they so the 32 the to the 16. They went from 16 to eight. They were in the final eight in the state. Yes. When, yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, LOL. Me not even knowing. So this is a comic book about, a, I don't even know if you consider, it is about basketball, but it's about so much more. I it's, mean. He talks, 
it's about relationships. Um, they touch on everything. They talk. He talks about the history of basketball. He talks about, about the history of basketball. He talks about history of basketball in other places. Other. He talks about women's basketball. Women, women's basketball. He talks, talks a lot about. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. About the prejudice that exists. Matter mm -hmm. of fact, in one point, he's like watching this game, and they don't even know he's part of the group, and listening to them all the racial slurs that they would yell. Yeah, and, I, I, and was, I, these are teenage boys. Yes, these are adult then, men yelling and, racial slurs at teenage boys and that are playing a, a sport. Like, leave them alone. Well. I know there's another spot where he goes to another school and they're yelling things at him, but it's like a lot of it's true, right? <laughs> he said, at least they got where he's from. Correct. And something like that. And then he goes, he says, I'm not impressed with your racism. <laughs> Did you catch that part? Yeah. The, the first one, he's like, I'm unimpressed by your, your racism. And the second one was like, well, at least you know where he's from. I mean, at least that is, this is unkind and not good. And I, I mean, at okay. Yeah, at least you know he's there's, where, what country he's from. There's this thing that so he like it's it goes through and tells the story like the story of them, um, the team and the friendships and the history of like the school like is intertwined throughout the entire book. Each yes. chapter focuses on a specific person or persons, right? That are part of the team. Correct. And um, this is a very racially uh, di uh, different, what do you call that? Diverse. Diverse team. Hmm. You, they actually have a Chinese exchange student. Yeah. Who at one point, at a couple of points, they think that um, uh, Mr. Yang is his dad. And he would say, I'm not his dad. At the end, he would just say, he'd be like, Thank thanks. <laughs> yeah. He's not my kid. Um, but you see about basketball in China. And mm -hmm. I tell you what, one of the things that struck me about that was he talked about um, the big, huge, tall uh, basketball player from China who came over mm -hmm. here. And I came for the life of me remember his name now. I'm but, scrolling. I'm trying to But find if I'm scrolling. not mistaken, Shaquille O'Neal says something that he I says something unkind, very then, racially insensitive. That and nowadays, then goes back and is like, I found it. Yeah. He's like tall. Like, look, Seven look at how. Well, don't say it. it tells how tall he is in there. But yes. okay, I'm sorry. I can't remember what the player's name is. I'm gonna find um, it. Yao Ming. Yeah, yeah. And um. Yeah, what's his last name? Anyway, so yeah, yeah. Yao and, Ming. How did you just remember that off the top of your head? I do know a little bit about sports. I know nothing. So Shaquille O'Neal had uh, nowadays he you wouldn't if you said something like that you get eaten alive on social media. Yeah, and but, he like literally like smacked the ball. Out of Shaquille yeah. O'Neal's hand, and he, Shaquille yes. O'Neal was like, "No one had." It literally says, "No one had ever done that to Shaq before." Yes, and then Shaq said, "You know, I have to give him props." Um, but they talk about that about how, why he decided to come to America. He went this this Chinese exchange student went to another school and realized went to Rhode Island. I'm the best one here. This isn't helping me at all. Mm -hmm. So that's why he got, found a different place, and he ended up coming to um, Bishop O'Dowd because mm -hmm. he wasn't the best. But they learned that when he got there, he didn't know that the first year in the state, you couldn't play on the varsity team. He sit out a year, so he lost a year of eligibility. Mm -hmm. And so yes. he only got to play varsity ball. One year. One year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They also have a student, a Punjabi student, mm -hmm. which I thought it was really interesting in the graphic novel as he's been drawing him. And then there was a conversation between. The he's students, like, I don't really like, like the way you're look. You're drawing my hair. That doesn't like. I. That's not what my hair looks like. <laughs> and then he's like, Okay, I'm just trying to do it, you know. And then next thing you know, his hair looks different. His hair's completely changed. He, and he wanted him to make him look different than the um, African American students on the ball team. Mm -hmm. And so then he changed the hair the next time, and it's mm -hmm. completely different for the rest of the book. Mm -hmm. um, but you get. Uh, it's such a good book. There, he does this thing that's throughout the book where, oh, I'm going to cry just thinking about it. It was so sweet and it was so profound for me that anytime someone does something that's a struggle for them or it's new for them or they are like being brave, that's what it is. It's because oftentimes when we think about bravery, we don't think about how vulnerable that can be for people, especially if it's like trying something new or being a beginner at something or putting yourself in a space where you feel uncomfortable. Um, that's 
to me, one of the bravest things that a person yep. could do. And okay. anytime someone does that, and it happens every single chapter, is it's a zoom in on the person's foot and it just says step. Yes, step. Them taking the step. Them taking like the first step. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like moving into and the very first time you see it is when um Mr. Yep. Yang like walks like walks across the school to, to the, the gym. Gym to the gym. That's his first step. And it says yes. Yeah, and it's of him walking and it says step. Um and I think that's really beautiful too is that you come to find out that um Jean Lun Yang became a teacher there because he had to take over for a previous teacher who was let go mm -hmm. due to um implications of harassment charges. Harassment charges. It happened to be the head basketball coach. Yeah. And um the person just it was just like if it correct me if I'm wrong but the person never came forward they just said something and then it was never never went any further like they never knew who the person the case was, was the person, dismissed well because the person never came forward they never said anything about it but the coach was let go and the new coach is his name Robbie Lou Lou the new coach Lou was the assistant coach he takes over mm -hmm. but it's very sweet because Lou Every time he sees the old coach, goes and says hi to him and kisses him on the forehead. And, um, but, but. Yeah, he talks about how. He didn't want to put that in the book. Yeah, no, I'm trying to find it because I think that he handled it really, really well. Extremely well. So Extremely Lou well. talked about, <clears throat> like, that he's, Lou, like, to paraphrase, that Lou was unsure if it happened or if it didn't happen, that regardless his coach mm -hmm. was like really big on like responsibility and accepting the consequences of his actions and potentially like losing reputation legacy that that is part of his consequences. But what do you do when it's like uncertain because it wasn't like confirmed or denied, it was just Correct. dismissed. Mm -hmm. And so what he said is that after, after everything happened, no one wanted to physically be near the coach. And so coach Lou decided that every so I'm reading at this point, and again, here's the step, a step into vulnerability and Yeah, he takes the step to go to the coach kindness. and shows it. Yes. And says, every time I see him, I'm going to give him a hug, a kiss on the forehead. I'm going to say, how you been, coach? Because he's still a coach. He's still human. Yeah. And, and it's so, interesting because no yeah. one really had anything bad to say about him. Now, there was a little thing about, hey, did he favor his white players over his black players? And mm -hmm. Lou said... He gave us each what we needed, you know, like to make us do what we needed to do. Um, so it was a little bit, it was inconclusive, but mm -hmm. I think coach Lou must be a stand up dude. I think he, he seems like a stand up dude based off the way that he communicates and the ways that they. Okay. Interact for, and stuff like that. You ready, you ready for some, go ahead. Yeah. I really liked, um, Austin. Austin he wasn't Austin. one of the two he wasn't one of the people that was like most like yes because they do have two superstars in there we just haven't mentioned them and they yeah. talk about their like it's interesting too you get to see their basketball life and a little bit behind the scenes mm -hmm. of who they are I really liked oh, shoot I can't remember are you ready for this Hannah yes you can watch the highlights of this game on YouTube because it happened in That's what so year? sweet. In 2015. I went and watched it. I really? Went and watched the end, yes, of the championship. And the funny thing is, is that they have like a great, like a picture of the whole crew, and there's the one assistant coach with a baby. No way. The baby's you, there. The baby is there. I thought, the basketball I game. thought that he was, I thought, so y'all, in this comic, there's one assistant coach, and the entire time he has a baby strapped to his front. Like and entire, I just thought it was see him. like every time you see him, he has a baby. At one point, he has a baby stroller and is like rocking the baby stroller back and forth. Yes. He has a he, like literally this kid is, is in a papoose. Yes. Like in, on the, front of him in a papoose. The kid is on YouTube. He's there. The guy's <laughs> holding him. And I thought, my golly, he nailed that. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, we got to we got to finish this up. Hannah. Oh, you I'm, you I just dad. We could talk about it for a long time. Here's what it was I, just so good. Any this book is great for anyone it has a lot to do with the world mm 
Mm-hmm. Um, like one character was so upset that everybody shined like a great light on Gandhi that he asked to do something because Gandhi, he didn't feel was a, was good to his, was people. a great guy. Yeah. So, um, but so you get to see about life in India, in China, in, um, inner city, Oakland, um, mm-hmm. and how basketball, play, but it's really a, a story like Hannah says of people taking the step into something new and of, of, yeah, of people taking brave steps, brave steps and what that can mean for each person in different contexts. So it's not necessarily like, like what you think of when you think of people being brave, like, like fighting in a war or something like that, but like some of the more like vulnerability parts right. of being brave. Mm-hmm. Like saying, hey, I don't like what you said, or um, trying something new, um, putting yourself out of your comfort zone. Types so of this steps. has, this this doesn't have a lot, it doesn't, re- it has asterisk cuss words, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. But you know what they are. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't know I if I would, I don't know. This is a really good book, but I think kids, you would let me read it in middle school. Middle school. I would read it with you. Yeah. I, I yeah, I'm school. trying to think. You would, we would read it would, like I seventh grade. I give this grade. five basketballs, by the way. It's fantastic. I could see you it's letting me read this in seventh grade. My favorite graphic novel to date that I've read. Mm-hmm. Um, it was phenomenal. And I cried in it. Same. I laughed out loud. Same. At parts. And um, so if you like comics, you will like this book. If you like basketball, you will like this book. So if you don't know anything about any of them, you'll like this book. You'll like this book. Hey, that's so, your girl. That's your girl. You I liked it. We, we give it. Five basketballs. Yeah, it was really good. All right. Well, hey, Justice League we get in, or your comic books? No, let's do comics and we'll get over and then we'll do. Um, so I just have four books I want to talk about. Okay, the, lay them on us, Pops. I'm going to do it quick. First of all, um, a new book came out called Carnage, Black, White, and Blood. So Carnage is the yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Uh, the evil symbiote alpha venom. And it's like one of those anthology where they get like four different stories in the book. And I don't like it. Okay, don't like so it. What don't the, you like about it? Because he's a bad guy, and he's not just a bad Carnage guy. Carnage is a bad guy. Yeah, but he's a vicious bad guy. And I'm Isn't he always another... a vicious bad guy? Yes, but there's a way to write a book about a bad guy, and it'd still be a good book. The only reason I mention this is because the last story is a create-your-own story. It's a create-your-own-adventure book? It is. It That's literally, dope. You take a die, you roll it, You add up, it gives you the points, and then you go, it says go to panel one, and then you roll and you add or whatever, and then it'll say go to, and it's, does Carnage become good at the end or bad at the end? (sighs) And that is a gimmick, and it was funny. I liked it. And the art was a little bit, a little bit cartoony. So um, he fights like animal, like hitmen as animals and stuff. I don't know. So, but the other stories before it are just, I don't know, they're just sad and depressing. Mm. So. Other than that, I would stick with it. Now, I'm going to talk about a book that just came out that is a villain, but it's a good book. Okay, so, laid on us. Do you remember I told you what Disney bought 20th Century Fox? They got the rights to what? The Predator and Alien? Yes. So Marvel oh, no. put out Alien number one. And I thought, oh, gosh, this is going to be a comic book where, like, Iron Man fights the alien. But it's not. It is set in the alien world. Dope. Um, and it follows a officer who retires. His name's Gabriel Cruz. He is. He has lived through some junk with the alien and has some serious PTSD. He is retiring, and he wants to go home and make amends with his son, who has fallen in with a domestic terrorist group. Oh. Who wants to destroy. What? Who wants to That destroy, was casual. Well, who want? Well, he's fallen into something to go against what his dad does. Mm. You see what I mean? Because he yeah. felt like his dad was terrible to him. So he gets he gets his dad's badge or whatever his data, mm. and is able to get back on the state space station that his dad used to be on. So they break in to the lab, the company Wayland Utani, which has been throughout all the things, mm. and they want to. They think they're doing. Ex- experimental weapons they want to blow up the space station well when they get in it ain't guns it's aliens alien creatures Ooh. at one point now i'm spoiling oh it, no at, at one point they asked they tell this woman we can't get this through this door open this door she goes the guy's got a gun and he goes i ain't opening that door she goes i don't think you under he goes i don't think you understand how a gun works and she goes 
I ain't opening that door. And then she basically says alpha two Z Z dude, zero minus 47 deactivate, uh, selfish destruct, blah, blah, blah. She's sets off the locks them in, shuts it all down. She's like, y'all ain't getting out. And she gets killed, but it, the creatures are loose. So here's the deal. Here's the deal. Mm. I, I saw a comic book, uh, article about, the Joker comic book that came out last week. And they had mentioned, they made a reference to how do you make a good book with the villain as the star? Okay. The villain is not the star. Like if you think about jaws, the star of the movie was the sheriff. Yeah. And the star of aliens was Sigourney Weaver. Oh yeah. So girl got it, man. So I believe that this Gabriel Cruz, they really did a lot to set up his backstory. So you Um, think he's going to be, I think that's how you make a good, that's how you make the villain a good comic book. So the art, the aliens drawn on it are fantastic. The people, they look weird. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know if it's, I don't know if the, how the guy does his art. It's probably, I don't know, but they just look sort of hmm, like hmm. he's, I don't know. So, but it's a definite, I can't wait to see where this book goes. Um, so yeah, alien. Interesting. That's so cool. another, another book I'm reading right now is called Post Americana, and this is definitely for the adults. This is a um, post apocalyptic America, like it is a grisly dystopian comic book. Back when I was growing up in the '80s, we used to have all these B movies about dystopian future. Like uh, uh, there was a movie called She, The Ultimate Warrior, um, America Three Thousand extermination of the year 3000 equalizer 2000 even uh the road warrior um so like if you i I read where somebody in their little in image comics it's put by image comics they said uh, mix kill bill with mad max fury road and this is what you get (laughs) so that sounds like a bop though it is um it is just pure insanity like judge dread mixed with mad max mixed with that she movie from the eighties and um, they're trying what, here's what happened. Basically what happened was this is that if the, if the world was coming to an end, like apocalypse was happening, there was this bunker with all the stuff we needed to survive. And the executive branch didn't get there. They got destroyed before the only people that made it were the rich snobs that, that they're the only ones that lived and made it. So they're trying no. So, that's what they want to do. Okay. That's funny. So uh, that's a plus. So that's by um, image. And then the last one is justice league came out from infinite frontier. Again, I'm still a week to two weeks late on my DC comics. I'll have a slew of DC comics next time we meet, but um, this justice league book takes up and black Adam again. That's I, I feel like DC does this anytime they have a movie or a show coming out. They try to showcase that person that, i yeah. mean i guess that that like, makes sense as a marketing remember, strategy we talked about peacemaker going to be in the suicide squad movie mm-hmm. who's now in the comic book mm-hmm. um so black adam literally the cover of the comic book has all the justice league in shadow and it looks like shazam but it's not it's black adam <sighs> so they introduced this new villain called brutus who um comes to earth <laughs> and black adam is like the ruler of this country um Sort of like Dr. Doom is the ruler of Latveria. Mm. Doc, uh, Black Adam is the ruler of Kandak. So um, this... That's a weird dude, name. This new villain comes there. He tries to beat up the Black Adam. Well, the Justice League shows up saying, hey, we're here to save the day. And so they fight. Brutus leaves. And Black Adam says, you guys don't need to be here. Get out. Get, get out, basically. So then the Justice League goes back to their little Hall of Justice. And they try to decide where this guy come from and they find out that he has the same energy signature of another new superhero that just came out not too long ago named Naomi. I talked about her because she is an African-American girl whose CW is picked up for a TV show. Yes. So she is um, the daughter of, from another, another parallel universe, but doesn't know who her, you know, doesn't know basically the origin of her powers, but you come to find out that, she and maybe this guy are from the same place. And the comic ends with Black Adam saying, Naomi McDuffie, we need to talk. 
interesting dun, thing dun, is, dun. is that they gave her the last name McDuffie after the guy who created uh, Milestone Comics. Hmm. Dwayne McDuffie, the guy who created Static Shock. Oh, that's which, cool. Which they are doing a live action movie now. Are they? Yeah, we're a step ahead. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> I will continue to get Justice League. I am not going to get Carnage. Alien looks awesome. Um, and post-Americana is just uh, a guilty pleasure. Now. We, here's the thing. Spoiler heavy. Image and Boom Studios are just kicking it out of the park, man. They, well, they have a, they're free to tell different stories. They, yeah, they can they're do not, what they want. They're not holding they're not to just. burdened by the past. By old farts like or me. expectations mm -hmm. that's what i meant by the past like other people's right. expectations okay let's spoilers. hit spoilers 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 for <laughs> justice snyder league cut. snyder cut okay off the bat i told they, you this shirt sniffing thing was weird i i mean i that i i knew that was coming and so i stopped paying attention gotcha here's what i will say they did women dirty in the original like in the 2017 one like they no like they did like the uh booty shots and the booty like shots that. of wonder woman yeah and wonder woman's lines say, yeah. the wonder woman's lines in the very first one were like super lame the stuff that happened with lois lane was super lame in the 27 in 2017 Whatever, 20, the, the old one. Yeah. The weed and cut. This new one, Wonder Woman will beat you down with love. <laughs> and the, the, with the, shoot, what are they called? And Themis, Themis, the, the Amazonians. Like, yeah, the Amazonians. They, uh, I called dad. I was like, dad, this is awesome. Like, I was like 28 minutes in, called dad. They, um, Steppenwolf shows up and is like, I'm here for the mother box. And they're like, no. And he's like, I will bathe in your fear. And the queen is like, what do we say about fear? And everyone like yells, we have no fear. And then they start like shooting arrows at the guy. And I like screamed and was like, this is the coolest thing in the entire world. Okay, but okay, here's the deal. Does it take 800 people to surround a box with an arrow? Have they been pointing arrows they've at this box They've been standing there the years? Yes, they've been standing there for millions of years, Dad. That's ridiculous. No, I believe it with my entire heart that, of course, that's what they've been doing. Shut the doors! But leave the sunroof open. No, that there's not. Because I thought that, because you said that, and so I looked, but it had been, like, woven. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. so there wasn't, there wasn't... Do you know how oh, so Wonder bad. Woman got from that island to um, England in her first movie so fast? No. She's an Amazonian, so she can, uh, she can, she's okay for two-day shipping. You are silly. <laughs> it's terrible. Amazon, you are so free silly. shipping. But, Sorry. uh, so they, so cool, and then her, like, uh, Wonder Woman with the, with the bad guy at the, is it a bank or a museum? Yeah, who knows what that is. But that was dope. That was much better. I did like that part. That was 10 um, out of 10. Here's the deal. I, I didn't understand why the guy was... My issue with that is, that's ridiculous. Who I'm just going to blow up England and put Europe in the Dark Ages? Everybody else going to be fine? No, He's going to blow up like five blocks. Dad, I don't know how many... I, yeah, I mean, of course. It was dumb. Okay. I, I, that bothered I me. Thought, I thought Okay, that... did you catch... Did you catch the change in her music? No, it became it, out like it became a, it became like rah. But once she once the fire started, it was it the came. ancient lamentation like, song. Yeah, like, I didn't like it. I was no, like, I, like I, liked I liked that. I liked that better. Because it changed well because it was she was the only person who understood the gravity of what was happening because she okay. grew up with stories about what that meant, right. and so to me it was. Like, okay, also, I, li I watched it with subtitles. That's because true. Because that's how I live my life. Did it say woman sniffs weird shirt in it? <laughs> in subtitles? You need to let that go, Dad. You need to just let that go. Because so much other cool stuff happened. Let me pull up my, let me pull up. Um, okay, so wait, wait. I, okay, I like live texted you some of it. Yeah, but do we need to see 10 minutes of Bruce Wayne horseback riding over the tundra? <laughs> We don't need that. <laughs> I mean, literally. That's I get funny. it. But 10 That's minutes. Funny. 
And by the way, what is his shirt budget? I mean, why does he take his shirt off to go into the ocean? But My, his boots and his blue they, jeans. They the costuming for they did Aquaman dirty in the costuming department, man. Because they're like sitting there trying to figure out if they should wake up Superman or not, and he's in a he's in a tank top and a button up vest that's left unbuttoned and a skinny scarf wrapped around his neck like three times. And I'm like, who decided that this is what we should make? <laughs> Aquaman wear okay. in their first round table We're discussion. Really, I'm picking on it. I know. So let me I, just get out of the way and say, the, is this a better movie? Ten a times thousand better. Times. Is like, it a good movie? No, it ain't good. It's a good movie. No, it's not. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's fine. If you I really like five mother boxes. You can. I really liked the. Um, so they like did some. So I I think that they did. I think that representation of people of color and representation of women is a lot better in this film. I told you that. I told you Ray Fisher had a legitimate beef. His and portrayal of Cyborg was fantastic. In this was film. phenomenal. Plus the sacrifice of his father. Oh, his man. His father sacrifices himself so that they can find. Find so that they know because it supercharges the mother box right. so that they'd be able to know where to go. Okay. We also get Steppenwolf's motivation which we mm -hmm. didn't get in the first movie. Mm -hmm. He wants to do this so that he can please Darkseid and yeah. go back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, He's like an estranged son. Well, yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah. I thought that the end battle was 10 times cooler. Really? Do you think they needed to cut his head off? Oh, no. I think that that was just because he had been taunting Wonder Woman since the very I beginning. I can understand Wonder Woman, but I didn't... The whole thing with Superman being part of that, I'm not keen on. That's my whole deal with Superman. You know. Because he wouldn't have done that? No. Okay. Would you do that? I wouldn't have cut, like, his horn off. Like, that seemed a bit silly. No, no, no. Cut his head off. They cut his head off oh, at I the that. end. At the very end, his head rolls into Dark Seeds. Oh, and he steps on it. Yes. That's sad. Yeah. I don't, I mean, I don't know. He was raised, Superman was raised by two loving parents who taught him values and caring He for didn't other do people. that, though. Someone else did that. No, but he had part in it. I liked, I liked when he, like, the, his axe came down and, like, hit it, hit him in the shoulder yes. and stopped going. And then Think. he blew on it and it turned into ice. ice. And then he, that like, was cool. flicked it. And I yeah. was like, oh, Superman is so cool. Yes. He was in an all-black costume. Yep. Which was interesting. It was interesting. Um, I really liked what they did. I think... Yeah, I think Flash and Cyborg were 10 times cooler in this one. I'm not hiring a guy who puts a hot dog in his pocket at a dog store. <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> I mean, that really? Kid is, he's so weird, man. I know he's it. He's so weird and I love it. I it love was, how weird he is. It was interesting at the end, you get to see him turn time back. That was cool. Flash. And he he's runs like so running, fast he's running and turns, forward and is like rebuilding like the ground is like rebuilding the on his speed feet. force. Yes, because he's running back through time using. Uh, yeah, speed I really force like what I like that. Time. That was it's cool. like electric -y. Yeah, I um, think that that's my, cool. One of my issues with the I don't know I'm picking on it. I don't think anybody if you look at anybody who runs, they don't run like he runs. Nobody, I think that they make him because I thought that, too. I was like I was sitting I was watching it. and I was like, I think it's really cool that for him to be very fast, they make him very slow. I understand that, but it looks like he's flailing. He's like, it doesn't look like he's like, do, Us, I think Usain Bolt can beat him. <laughs> if he ran like Usain Bolt's form, he'd, yeah. Here's, I also, but there's no the way that one of those flying monkey things would have been able to like find the exact right moment. Oh, they were just shoot. firing at random. Willy nilly. I love that. Word. Well, no, they got him. They got Wait, him at the end and he did my word? Purpose. What's my word? Toot nanny. I say Willy. Toot nanny. <laughs> yeah. They shot him in the toot nanny. I, the AI in the Superman ship. Yes. That was so the creepy, AI is telling them, man. don't do this. This is bad. This, they're like counting down. Cyborg's counting down from five and the computer's like echoing him. And so he goes like, Cyborg goes four and the computer goes four. This action is irreversible. <laughs> I strongly advise <laughs> against. against three. 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 I advised against this action. And I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. Dude, this action is irreversible. <laughs> and then in like, and then Batman's like, do it. Do it. <laughs> and Cyborg says no. And Flash hears go. Oh, and I didn't catch that. Cyborg, well, that's because you don't watch with the subtitles, Dad. Oh, my bad. 
because Silver Cyborg sees no. a vision of the future. <gasps> right. And wow, says really no. Is. And then and the flash runs. Go. Gotcha. Because he thought he said go. Gotcha. Um, one of my favorite parts of the original it's is when – is still in there – is when a Superman is fighting against the three people minus Batman – and Flash is like running up behind him, like, ooh, I'm gonna surprise him and get him. And you his like eye, Superman's eye like sees him and then While his he's head got turns. someone by the neck. And he's like holding three people, Two, catches the three, flash out yes. of the corner of his eye, turns his head. Oh, I know. That, that part is just so my cool. Problem, my question is, what did the Flash think he was gonna do? I don't think the Flash thinks anything, Dad. I don't think so either. Yeah. I think he's but just like my friends wasn't as good. <laughs> wasn't as goofy in this movie as the no. last one. So Yeah. Um I really liked um I'm trying to think. Um I dum, thought dum, 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 I'm going to tell you what I thought was forced. The Martian Manhunter was forced. Oh, of course. I would they could have done that much better. And then she's like you can call me Martian, Martian Manhunter. Manhunter. I'm like, what? Just say oh, my name and... is Martian. Yes, I'm Martian Manhunter. Like, what? Now, I told you I didn't like the k- nightmare scene. That was weird. Do you see why? I didn't like that nightmare scene. It made scene. absolutely no sense. And I the know. Joker's just the sitting Joker, there in like his weird. As, and I I'm told like, you he was creepy, but he was creepier than he needed to be creepy. He was, I was just like. Inappropriate. Why is he here? And you could clearly, I mean, you couldn't clearly. Because I'm I could your clearly only tell. friend. What? Weirdo. I could yeah. tell that it had been added in because they had no no shared shots. It was always back and forth. Yeah. And you oh, could really? tell. Yeah. They had Batman like a... and the Joker oh, had no, gotcha. like, they were not in the same frame ever. Understood. Not, they yeah. never had the same, like, shot in the same frame. Um, hmm. So anyway, I. And he, like, talks yeah. about, like, he, like, like, Killing I was Robin. sitting there watching it and I'm like, is he, is he talking about like Robin? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was He's like, is he? Are they Robin. teasing like Robin? And I thought it was like weird because at the very end, Lex Luthor because is sitting on a boat, and his... that guy shows up that has an eye patch. That's... Not in this movie. No, in this movie. In the epilogue. Oh, oh yeah, death. That's Deathstroke. And Deathstroke. then in Remember? the nightmare. In the nightmare. Deathstroke's with him. Yeah. And he's like, they're on the same team. And so I was like, I don't, does this guy hate Batman? Do they like each other now? I was very confused about that. It's because Superman apparently is, has gone bonkers and that's who they have to fight against. But some people think maybe he's been, uh, correct. Because they talked about how like they, yeah, that they, yeah. So they talked about anti-life, which I'm like, that's the dumbest name for anything ever. Anti-life equation. That's what he's been searching for all along. That's so which dumb. Which is what deceased my comic book that I love. Really? Is about. And I yes. also thought that it was so named that his name was Dark Side, but it was spelled S E I D. I'm yeah. like, that's the lamest thing in the entire world. I'm like, why isn't it called Dark Seed? Like, why is Dark Side? Like Kirby. Is that, is that I mean, it's not gods. the lamest thing in the entire the world. The woman in it is Granny Goodness. You saw her at the end. You'd had no idea who that woman was standing next to Dark Side. Yeah. Her Granny, name's Granny, Granny Goodness? Yes, but she is not good. She That's takes dumb. all these kids and tortures them and tortures them and makes them into ultimate warriors. Oh, no. Which is where, where Mr. Miracle, one of my favorites, oh, he no. was raised by Granny Goodness. So was Big Barda. What else so. did I really like? Um, <clears throat> dum, 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 dum. I'm glad it's over. I'm not going to watch it again. I like that uh, Batman in this was very much like, yo, I know I'm old and I can't do this by myself. Yeah, he basically just was there to get the group together. Yeah. We're getting the band back together. And I liked that yeah. it wasn't, I liked that, I don't, I liked that that was his, like his role. Yes. Like it wasn't like it, because in like the original, he played more of a large part. And in this one, it was more of like, Hey, you all are the people that are going to be able to do this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lure them. And hopefully yeah. they'll pay attention to me and you the can actually demons. do the job. And that's I what I was... said last week. Cause I thought that, you know, in the, in the Whedon film, they spotlighted the Trinity, mm-hmm. Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. And in this one, you actually get to see more, especially 
um, Cyborg. Cyborg was. So, I'm cyborg so. Stuff. If anything, his stuff it's was the coolest. It's worth watching. They didn't need. Here's the deal. They didn't need to say the three F words. I mean, I get where he came from with the one with uh, with when he's talking to Wonder Woman. Like, I get, I get okay, like the teenage like say like, one. Yeah. And then you still make it PG thirteen. I don't I mean, think they could have made it. Of, it it was blood, a lot of splattery stuff. Yeah, but it didn't even look like blood. It was so dark still. Yeah. Apparently, there's a black and white version you can watch. Well, I'm I'm done. That's I've weird to me. Of them. Snyder Bros. Bring back the Snyder verse. Oh, I mean, I'd I'd watch it again. Um, yeah. I don't know when? why I would. Yeah. Like I was today after church. I was like, "What am I going to do after the podcast? I think I might sit and watch the extended Avatar." Oh gosh. And so, like, I I do sit and watch that, and that's a good four and a half hours long. So that's like something that I sit and watch, but I don't, I can't think of a time that I would choose this movie again, sit down and watch it again. I wouldn't be opposed to watching it again. So, but I don't know if I would choose it. If how many mother boxes? I don't like that because I I don't want there to even be one mother box. Okay. Well, I'm going to give it. (laughs) Okay. First though, first score the original and then score this one. Let me say this. If they, if they, they, Zack Snyder loves slow motion. There is so much slow motion. I think if he kept the slow motion out, it would only be an hour and 30 minutes long. Daddy. I'm just kidding. It wouldn't. It'd still be. Um, the movie doesn't need to be four hours long. Mm-mm. It doesn't need to be. Um, the first movie, I don't know. Like One two. mother box. Like a two was nice. I'm, I'm with you. Like one and a half. Okay. This I would not box, ever choose to watch it again. If someone had it on TV, I'd ask them to change the channel. Um, eh, I'm probably on um, this movie. I'd give it maybe two mother boxes. I'd give it like a, I'd give the first one like a one and a half and this one like a three and a half. All right. There you go. And because Hannah gave it three and a half mother boxes, our world's going to be erased. Well, because it takes three to do it. It takes three to make a thing go right. Two. Good. Don't, don't, don't. It makes three to make it out of sight. I don't know that whole song, but all right. I'm well, handsome. that's it for us. Yeah, friends, next thanks week, so much for listening. We will not record next week. It is Easter. Yeah. And it's Hannah's birthday weekend. It is. Next week so, is my birthday. Woo! Yeah. So we are not going to record a new podcast on the 4th because that's Easter and we're just going to take some time and be with our sweet fam. Um, but we will be back with you on a new, for a new episode. I'm pulling on up my 11th. calendar. So I'll make on sure I tell Add you. Add seven days to four. It's 11. Well, it will be released tax day, April 15th. Oh, gosh, I hate that day. (laughs) Something to look forward to on tax day. (laughs) Episode 23. Um, Our podcast art is created by Nathan Turner. He is my little brother, dad's son. Um, He made it by himself in Microsoft Paint. He is an artiste and is phenomenal. Thanks for doing that for us, bud. Um, Our Uh, intro music is created by Brock Will Nason. Check him out wherever you listen to music. I know he's on Spotify. Yeah, he's on Spotify for sure, for sure. He's on Apple Music. Oh, cool. We yeah. are too. Apple Podcasts. Yeah. Um, our podcast is put on the YouTube by, um, by Big me. Pops himself. It is edited you have our to podcast. Type Sis and Big Pop, apostrophe S, culture. If you just say <laughs> Sis and Big Pop, you're going to get zit videos. So don't <laughs> you stop. You fell through. You fell into a YouTube rabbit hole, didn't uh, you, no, when that happened? That. No more. No more. I have it bookmarked. <laughs> So, if you um, want to watch us talk like this, funny. I am live. Funny, right. funny. Well, friends, thanks for um. Ooh, I don't know what that yeah, was. Yeah, thanks for sitting with us and being with yeah. us. Enjoy. Thanks for hanging we're out in your ears and um, like I said, rate and review with all five stars and eighteen mother boxes. If mm. you're going to rate and review us negatively, don't do it. <laughs> We appreciate you, you, sweet friends. We hope that you have such a good um, whatever time of day or night it is for you. And we will catch you on the internet some other time. Happy Passover or happy Easter. Yo, yo. Yes. Bye, friends. See you next time. Bye-bye. Our sweet friends on Facebook, thanks for hanging out. I think Sally's watching still. Hey, Sally, we love you. Hey, Sally, we love you too. Okay. Bye. Bye, internet friends. Bye, guys.